Tip number eight is to, oh, there's another, and there's a ladybug flying around my living room. Oh my god, go away. I swear, if it flies into my face like it did last week, I'm going to freak out. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles from Instagram. Today, joining me for a video is Kronk, my Doomerals Bella. So today, we're gonna be talking to you about ten money-saving tips when keeping reptiles. So I feel like every reptile keeper has done a video like this. So it's my turn. So I'm gonna be giving you my top ten tips for saving monies, for saving monies, for saving money when keeping reptiles. So tip number one is one of the most obvious ones. That's to breed your own feeders. I personally breed mealworms, superworms, and dubia roaches. And um, so that's mainly what I'll feed. I will also buy neutral grubs and hornworms and whatnot, but I do breed dubia roaches, superworms, and mealworms. So that is very helpful. It saves a lot of money to have those being bred right here in my living room. Going off of that, tip number two is to make sure that when you buy insects and feeders online that you're buying from the cheapest, most um, cost-effective place. So for me, that is dubiaroaches.com. They're the only places that I will buy feeder insects from. I personally think they have the best prices and the best shipping because they have a flat rate shipping price. And that flat rate shipping price is like $7.95 or something like that no matter how much you buy. And I have had great luck with them. And so that's where I'll buy my hornworms and my nutrient grubs from. And sometimes if I'm lowing or running low on things like superworms because they're not growing fast enough and I need them now, I will buy some more from there. Or I'll buy like more dubia roaches from there to kind of grow my colony and get more babies. All my dubia roaches came from there um, to start off the breeding process. So if you're interested in checking out dubiroaches.com, I will put my link in the description below because by using that, you can save additional money on your dubiroaches.com purchase, making it even cheaper. So tip number three is one I mentioned in my snake keepers tips video, which Kronk was also the star of, and that is to buy your frozen mice in bulk from somewhere that sells them in bulk for that purpose because usually it's much cheaper than buying them individually or a couple at a time from a pet store or whatnot. Um, I stock up twice a year um, on frozen mice and for the mice, I pay about 40, 30 cents to 75 cents per mouse. And for rats, I pay about $1.25 to $1.75 per rat. So it's a lot cheaper than going to like the pet store down the road and getting one rat for Kronk for $5 when the place I get them from I can get a rat for him for $1.25. So buying in bulk from somewhere that's meant to sell them in bulk for feeders um, is definitely much more cost effective than buying a couple from a pet store. My next money hack is to buy basking bulbs from Walmart. So instead of buying the reptile basking bulbs, go to your Walmart find the halogen bulbs, the halogen floodlights. They work just as good, if not better, and they're so much cheaper and usually come in like a two or three pack. So I have switched all of my basking bulbs over to the halogen floodlights from Walmart. You just look at them at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, so that's what a lot of people use. I know what a lot of iguana owners use because full grown iguanas, you're gonna need a couple different light setups um, to be able to cover their whole entire body. So I know a lot of iguana owners use the halogen floodlights from Walmart, and that's actually where I initially got the idea from. So I finally did it, and I'm loving it. My fifth hack comes, well, my fifth and sixth hack have to do with cleaning. So first one is to not go out and buy cleaning products. I clean with a mixture of vinegar and water, and it works great. I know that's what a lot of reptile keepers use. It's much cheaper than constantly going out and buying reptile cleaners. Just DIY reptile cleaner. Tip number six is to have rags that are designated for cleaning. Instead of flying through a whole bunch of paper towel, 
and having to buy more paper towel. Just get some cleaning rags that you can use when you're wiping down enclosures or whatnot that you can just pop into the laundry machine or the washing machine and reuse. Not only is it cost effective, but it saves the environment too. Double whammy. Tip number seven is to make your own hides. It is super easy to make your own hides. Reptile hides can be ridiculously expensive. All you need is a awesome basket. If you guys have seen Phoenix, my corn snakes enclosure, she has a basket hide. If you wanna see more, go to my good friend Medusa's YouTube channel or her Instagram, and she has a ton of awesome basket hides. We love a good basket hide. So, a basket makes a good hide. Flower pots, I have a flower pot and my hognoses enclosure as a hide, super cute, super inexpensive, cost me like a dollar. Um, any sort of Tupperware containers, you can cut a hole in, just make sure it's nice and smooth and not gonna hurt the snake or lizard or whatever when it goes in. Super easy hide right there. It can be a great humid hide. It's super easy to DIY a hide and not have to go out and spend 20, 30, $40 on a hide. Tip number eight is to buy large enclosures right off the bat. Don't keep buying different sizes of enclosures, just grow with your animal. Just get the one they're gonna need as an adult right off the bat. It saves you a ton of money and it'll just, it'll be so much more realistic for your snake or your reptile, your lizard, whatever the animal is. In the wild, there's a lot of space. A lot of people say too big of an enclosure is gonna stress out your animal. Give them lots of places to hide, things to do, and they will be fine. I personally have grown a lot of my animals' enclosures as they grow, but that's because I have like a ridiculous amount of tanks at my parents' house that we're finally starting to sell and get rid of because I need money, but I have so many different sized tanks that I could grow my animals with the tanks because I already had the tanks on hand. If I had to go out and buy a tank as they grew, heck to the no. Heck to the no. I just go out and buy whatever enclosure I thought they were going to need permanently and that'd be that. Otherwise you're spending a whole lot of men money and they're just going to outgrow all those enclosures fairly quickly and then what? Okay, so tip number eight is to really think about the substrates you are using because sometimes reptile substrates are really expensive and not completely necessary. So Eco Earth, you know I love Eco Earth, a lot of people use Eco Earth. You know it's just as good as Eco Earth buying a ginormous bag of topsoil from Home Depot or Walmart or Lowe's for the same price as a little bag of Eco Earth. So that's what I've been starting doing a lot more with my animals lately. I don't buy Eco Earth anymore. I go out and I buy organic topsoil. One of my favorite things actually to do is to mix organic topsoil with play sand for animals that like to dig, such as my jeweled lacerta, because it holds those burrows and those shapes better and it makes it better for digging without just being plain old sand. So a mixture of sand and topsoil is like one of my favorite things to do. But topsoil, organic topsoil, make sure it's organic. That doesn't have any random stuff in it that's bad for your animal. Make sure it's organic. But that is so cost effective. A big bag of that is the same price as a little bag of Eco Earth. So I highly recommend looking into organic topsoil if you're someone that likes to use things like Eco Earth. And last but not least, tip number 10 is to use coupon codes. And what I mean by this is there are tons and tons of accounts out there, um, animal Instagrammers, animal YouTubers, that have links for sites like dubiaroaches.com or Josh's Frogs or the Dubia Dude or any of those other places, anywhere that would sell um, you know, feeders online or reptile supplies online. A lot of people have discount codes. Chewy, um, can't think of others off the top of my head right now, but utilize those. I know um, Jessica's Animal Friends, she has a code for Josh's Frogs. Make sure that if you're gonna buy supplies and you're buying online and you're buying from these sites, utilize those codes because usually it helps the person that has the code, you're helping support them. Usually they'll either get a commission or they'll get some discount on their own purchase and you're also getting a discount and saving money. So it's kind of a win-win when you use those. So tip number 10, 
utilize people's coupon codes and links. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more of my animals, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you get notified and we'll see you for the next video.